feel good about this because we've kind of had our first our first mishap. <laughs> and let's hope all our mishaps are that small. Mistakes were made. Quite a few of them actually. Most of them could have been avoided, and this video just might save you some frustration, time, and money. Do you have your wallet? I do have my wallet. We've been transparent with our mistakes from episode one in an effort to help the community not follow in our footsteps. You know, you've heard me say before, I don't I don't repeat the same mistake twice. I repeat it seven or eight times just to make sure I've got it. Well, with that in mind, for this 2024 season of RV travel, here are 24 mistakes we'd really like to be done making. Number one, driving at night. If you're new to RVing, Arriving in the dark is a recipe to make RVing even harder. Uh, and that, kids, is why you call to make a reservation. <laughs> and yet, it's likely going to happen, especially if you're trying to make some time. So when you're in this position, our first move is to pick a location that we can pull into without disconnecting, like a Cracker Barrel, Harvest Host, or Walmart. But if you need power and water, pick campgrounds off the freeway that have a pull-through site or after-hour check-in. Risk goes up at night, so think of ways to make it easy. Did you really just say, oh dear? <laughs> Number two, not checking our tires before taking off. You might be thinking, how could an experienced RVer forget that? And the short answer is, because we're not leaving our house Friday and returning Sunday. We're leaving in March and returning when it gets cold. It's easy to forget simple tasks when one day leads into the next, but things happen on the road. And if you have an axle or a bearing issue, your tires will tell you the story. By checking your tires before you go, you can avoid being stuck on the side of the road. Number three, not chalking before disconnecting your trailer. No one would do that, right? Well, when it's flat nine times out of 10, it's easy to think you'll only need to chalk when the surface is steep. But the fact is, it's hard to gauge just how flat the ground is over 20, 30, or even 40 feet. Mark. Oh. It's good practice to do the same thing every time, regardless of the circumstances to keep you and your RV safe. I absolutely always, 100%, regardless of how flat, is, flat a site is, even on concrete, I chalk my tires. It's just part of the process. Okay. Number four, putting it in drive before entering the destination into your mapping device. If turn you're right toward Cloverleaf Boulevard, then turn left onto Cloverleaf Boulevard. Don't tell me where to go. <laughs> where did she say? A close cousin of this mistake is number five. Plug the city into Google Maps, but not the exact address. <laughs> I'm gonna put in Palm Springs for now, and then I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna hope to remember to change it to the RV park we're going to. <laughs> when we switch driving, I'll do that. That'll okay. be our cue when we switch. That's 35 minutes from now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> We've ended up at a lot of clock towers, city halls, and one-way downtown streets, which is what happens when you enter the destination and not the exact address. Look at what you did. I need to get out of here. I know. And you literally said, should I, I go down here? here. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, get propane at an RV park. It's wonderful when an RV park provides propane for when you run out and it's 20 degrees, but you'll pay a lot more than if you found the nearest tractor supply or propane dealer. The only thing worse than filling up at an RV park is using a propane exchange program that's like connecting your furnace to your wallet. Remember, the best way to save money when you're RVing is proper planning for crucial supplies. Number seven, disconnecting your trailer before making sure the power cable and the hose reach. No explanation needed. This is simply just a rookie mistake that even experts make from time to time. All right, well I could, I can come that much closer. And that's why we do that. Number eight, driving over 65 miles per hour. We did a video on how fast is too fast to tow. 
and we're not here to should on you. But all the experts we interviewed agreed on 65. Do you ever go over 65? Never. Never? Why do you not tow over 65? Uh, because I want to arrive alive. <laughs> we get past all the time. And remember, it's not how it feels when everything is right. It's how fast you can get back in control when things happen suddenly. If the tail starts wagging the dog, remember, reach for your trailer brakes immediately. Oh, look at that. No ducky left behind. Number nine, not doing a walk around before leaving. This is a mistake we don't make often, but it can happen, especially if you're distracted with a new RV, friends, or if you're in a hurry. Remember, you're not only walking around to look at the key spots, but you're taking a step back to see your vents, satellite, or Starlink. Number 10, not filling your gas tank when you're disconnected. Being diesel, we prefer to fill up at a truck stop using our TSD card. Not only do we get a discount on fuel, but it's safer, faster, and we can get DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. Visit keepyourdaydream.com slash fuel for more information. But if you have a gas tow vehicle, filling up can be tricky and not all gas stations are created equal. Filling up when you're not connected can save a lot of drama. Plus, not letting your gas level get low is better for your fuel pump. Oh yeah, this is not, this is not fun. I remember doing this once saying, I'm not gonna do that again. Number 11, this is a biggie, not using goal, G-O-A-L, when backing your RV. Goal stands for get out and look. This is what happens if you don't get out and look, or you don't get out and look enough times. When it comes to maneuvering your RV, slow is pro. I like how you're going slow. <laughs> yeah, good, slow is pro. Yeah, that was good. Um, it's just off. <laughs> Speaking of backing, that leads us to number 12, saying right or left instead of passenger or driver. Check your driver's side, check your driver's side. Backing a trailer can get confusing when you're learning, and when right means left, it's best to stick with terms that both the driver and the spotter understand. If you're new to backing, we have an entire video dedicated to saving your marriage while backing a trailer. We'll link it here, but remember, use driver and passenger as your terms. Yet sometimes damage can happen while driving forward too, especially when you're too close to trees, gas pumps, or even cars. I'm not sure what you hit. The tree. The tree. Yeah. Number 13 is making sharp turns without considering tail swing. It's important to know how many feet are behind your turning axle to know just how far your RV swings when you're maneuvering in tight quarters. Failure to do so will help realize just how big your awning is when it's not connected to the RV. And then the neighbors right behind us, they, they, tied, they use tie downs for their awnings, which we've done before too. If I'm gonna be somewhere for a while and I know I want it out and I don't wanna have to worry about it, you can tie it down to the ground. And I don't think it's foolproof though, but it, I have done it. And number 14, you guessed it, not bringing in your awning when you leave. We see awnings out all the time. With most electric awnings, it doesn't take much to break the hinges. And we've had a couple awning issues and it really does take the fun out of a trip. So we might have to just like tape it down. Number 15, telephone wires. Okay, this wasn't even our fault, but in two seconds or less, can you tell me how high your rig is? One, two. If not, make a label and put it somewhere visible. Approaching a low clearance bridge at 65 miles per hour is no time for arithmetic. No, what do you mean you think it's fine? I'm it's pretty good at eyeballing things, and oh. I think that's good. Why doesn't it have a height? It does. Oh, 11.2. Eleven, oh, oh, babe, how we're, high are we? We're 11. It's, we're, we're, we're definitely, oh. we're definitely more than 11.2. Unfortunately, this one was our fault. 
Number 16, dragging the bumper. There are so many places along the way that just aren't suitable for RVs. And it's important to take your time to consider an alternate way out of a parking lot or even an RV park. You don't like it? I don't like it. I can go out there. I just have to move around. Number 17, taking Charlie to Stowe, Vermont. Oh! <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. If you know, you know. Charlie, what'd you do that for? Come on. Oh. Make sure you don't leave oh. anything out that your dog could possibly get into. Now, let's make our way to Ohio for mistake number 18. Parking in a grass field before the rain. We are now much better at asking questions before parking on the grass. We do it all the time, but just as long as you're on high ground, you won't have any problems. Oh, hey, you did pretty good with him. What do you got planned for me? How was that? Is that good? Oh, that's even better. All right, good. Yeah. Number 19, driving more than 350 miles in a single day. We have 14 hours and 35 minutes. Oh, don't even. Okay, we're probably not going to stop doing this. And those of you that live in Texas know that sometimes you just have to cover some ground. But I'll be the first to admit that keeping it under 350 leads to a more enjoyable experience. And it's safer. Mm -hmm. Mark has nicknamed me the Beeline Queen. But it is worth slowing down once in a while. Oh, here we go. Once in a while to enjoy some of these things because we would have never caught them. Something that is definitely not happening again is number 20, winter camping. It was fun the first time, not so much the second time. <laughs> there are a lot of people that like it, and if you want to go, give it a shot. We even have a video about it, but for us, we've checked that box. We're not going to do this again, so <laughs> I just want to make sure like, we were clear. Like, it's fun. We enjoyed it. We love skiing. We love winter activities, and I actually enjoy the snow, but I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. Number 21, not visiting visitor centers. National parks are considered to be America's best idea, and we have an entire season dedicated to national parks, plus an episode on our favorite national parks. But don't forget to stop by the visitor center as you will learn the best places to visit, great hikes, and get answers to all of your questions. Number 22, not pulling a little gray to keep the drama away. And by drama, you know what I mean. Now we'll pull a little bit of gray. We'll make sure all of our, that's enough. Just make sure everything is good. Pull a little gray to keep the drama away. Then I'll pull my black. That's good, that's a good sign. It's a great saying, because I tell you what, it just takes one little thing not being connected completely, and depending on your environment, who's watching, concrete, grass, it could be... Explosive. Uh, ex explosive. You've heard us use the phrase poopsie before, and it's an oopsie with the black tank. I had an accident. Did you have poopsie? I had worse than a poopsie. It's like the valve wasn't even closed. As soon as I took the cap off, it just went exploding. We're gonna have to take those shoes off. I'm gonna have to take my skin off. <laughs> By pulling just a little bit of gray, you can test all your connections before you let her rip. It's a simple best practice that can save you some deposits in the swear jar. Oh my gosh. What happened? What happened? Did you see that? Was that water? I hope. Number 23. Did you know that borders have hours? Well, we didn't. At least not the one crossing back into the States on our way to Haines, Alaska. Well, I guess we shouldn't have been driving at night, so there you have it. Number 24, and this is a new one. Not using the KYD Road Trip Fun Map. We went to the community to get the best roadside attractions and places to visit, 
and the community delivered. So far, we've populated the South and California, but the map is filling up fast. By the end of this year, we suspect that it will be a great resource for your road trips and when you make it a summer to remember. To get the map, just visit keepyourdaydream.com slash roadtripfun. Your recommendations, suggestions for roadside attractions, stop seat parks, things to do, amazing. We have an incredible route planned for 2024, covering the U.S. like a pretzel fish. <laughs> from coast to coast and almost 12,000 miles. If you're new to KYD, subscribe, and we'll catch up with you every Sunday. If you wanna join us this year at meetups or an event, check out the KYD Insiders. We'll see you next Sunday from Sequoia National Park.